There, Bruce Millington, Mark Langdon, Dan Childs and Paddy Powers, Adrian Croak are looking ahead to three live big games on Sunday. What a cracker crammed into the space of about six hours. It starts at 12 o'clock midday at Selhurst Park, Crystal Palace versus Tottenham. It was meant to be on Monday night, but then Tottenham shipped a late equaliser against Red uh, Rochdale and my entire domestic plans <laughs> were bloody ruined. Thank you very much, Tottenham. Uh, so... I shall be at Selhurst at midday. Steve Davis left you snookered. For yeah, he, that's a very good. Yeah, he did. Worse than snookered. Oh, right. Completely <laughs> up a gum tree, mate. <laughs> but never mind. I've managed to wangle away. I will be there. Will I be disappointed, Mark? Um, why? Would you mind losing by one goal? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's what I'm going for. I'm going for Tottenham to win by, uh, by one goal. Actually, you have a look at the... Uh, recent games between these two, five of the last six have been 1-0. Um, either way, Tottenham winning the majority of those, but Palace have had a, the, the odd 1-0 as well. But um, Tottenham drawn their last five away matches, some of them better than others. Juventus and Liverpool, not so good at Newport and Rochdale, um, but Palace, it, assuming Zaha, not, not fit. Really. I doubt um, it'll be bad. I mean, you know, we're waiting on teams, but they haven't won a Premier League game without him since September 2016. Um, and that threat that he in his absence will enable Tottenham I think to, to attack more and he's always given Tottenham a right he, hard time has, there's a few he, videos of him spinning Kyle Walker into he, Kingdom he, Come he will yeah I mean Aurier will be or Trippier will be delighted that, um, that, that Will's not playing or even if he's around he's not going to be fully fit is he maybe they'll save him for the more United, winnable games yeah. um, that, that are coming up but uh, what you mean you mean United, United Chelsea well, or Liverpool well yeah. I mean I, I, I think that's about as winnable as, as this one uh, Palace have done okay in the uh, in some of the big games this season pushed Arsenal close beat Chelsea held Man beat City or, yeah, held Man City so I don't think it'll be an absolute stroll for Spurs at twos on or whatever but I, I think Tottenham will win and yeah, by one goal. OK, Paddy Power, 4-9 to nine, Tottenham. 11-2 to two, Palace, Burlington, Bertie, the draw. And Dan, what do you think? I think there? it might sort of pan out similar to last season's fixture. In Pal I mean, Palace were dealt a real uh, tough draw by the fixtures then, weren't they, when they had a lot of games going into it and, and were tired in the second half. I, I think this might be the, a similar sort of game. It wasn't the Deli Alley goal last no, season. No, no, Ericsson, the, the long-range oh, yeah, Ericsson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was Monday night, I think, wasn't it? Monday night, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, I just think that... Uh, Palace with injuries again. I mean, they've got obviously no Zaha. Sacco is another. Uh, the, the, the one Sacco could play. The, no, the defender could be back. And that's one of the reasons that I'm, I'm going to go for the bet that I'm suggesting, which is draw half-time, Spurs full-time. I think with Mamadou Sacco being available, it will stiffen them up at the back. But um, the other backery Sacco is, an, is a big miss as well. He was doing so well. He, he would have took on that kind of role, a bit of the role that they missed with Zaha, running up players, uh, you know, gets gets a few goals as well. And uh, Loftus-Cheek's another big miss. Got so many key players that are, oh, that, that are unavailable at the moment. And Spurs on the other side... They are. Everyone's fit, aren't they? They're fit, starting yeah. to do what they did last couple of seasons. He seems to get get the players fit and in, and in tune, and, and and the performance level seems to go up at this stage of the season. It's I know they were poor against second string at Rochdale, but the, when the first team have been out recently, uh, there's been a very consistent uh, level of performance. So I think they'll get this get the job done. Here, but Palace, I think, will will resist for for at least until the second half. Okay, uh, and Adrian, what do you think will happen at Selhurst? Yeah, I don't see Palace really having, without Zaha, having enough to kind of go at Spurs. And Spurs will eventually break down the defence here. I mean, they're, they're just too good going forward. So, um, always a bet really nearly every week is Harry Kane for us last any time. If you're looking for something, um, you can get him at 11-4 last and 4-6 to six for any time. I can't argue with you, lads. So, oh, well, we'll see. Uh, 205, Man United versus Chelsea. Adrian, what's the latest betting on that? So currently, Man United here six to five. The draws eleven to five, and Chelsea are twenty three to ten. Adrian, you you love Liverpool, so presumably you hate Man United. Um, tell us why you think that six to five is an absolute disgrace to bookmaking. Well, if you watched them last night, or were forced to watch them last night, uh, you'd recognise that they're not really going to attack too much against these bigger teams. Jose seems to be pretty happy to take a draw when he's uh, going up against bigger teams. Chelsea also kind of struggling at the moment. It's going to be a low-scoring affair. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what you kind of pick here. Uh, the unders is probably your best bet of Anton. Okay. Uh, currently uh, under two and a half, as short as eight to eleven in a big game like this. Makes sense, doesn't it? I actually didn't watch the game last night. I watched. The, I got oh. home, the Brits was on, and I was so I was sort of captivated by how weird and rubbish it was. There's some bloke called. Was Kanye not not Kanye West? Kanye Lamar. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. I've never seen anything more ridiculous in my life. It was. It was lying on this glass case while underneath this bloke smashed a Lamborghini to smithereens. Yeah. And, and I had to cut half of it out because he was swearing. <laughs> it sounded like Norman Collier rapping. It, honestly, the whole thing was ridiculous, but I couldn't take my eyes off it. <laughs> Having said that, it didn't sound like I missed too much. Anyway, I digress. Man United, Chelsea, what's the bet? I, I was, I mean, uh, in agreement with Adrian there, but I was going to go for the draw um, in terms of the fact that it's likely to be a, a low scorer. I couldn't put anybody off the unders. Either really, I mean, Mourinho and Conte have got some serious history oh, yeah, this course, season. Yeah, I mean, this yeah, is not got, just this uh, is the game where they hate each other, isn't it? <laughs> you know, and Conte said uh, something along the lines of, you know, wait until I see him. Or yeah, you know, and Mourinho yeah. mentioned the the um, alleged match fixing, which he was uh, cleared of eventually. So um, yeah, there, there's no love lost between these two um, managers, but it's a big game for both teams. And I think even though they're at home, United will want to keep Chelsea at a distance from them in terms of top four. Um, so they're not going to be overly aggressive, and I don't think a draw is a bad result for Chelsea either, even if it does mean that, that Tottenham overtake them, keeps them still very much in the hunt. And uh, away from home, Chelsea, they've drawn at Liverpool, um, they won at Tottenham, albeit fortuitously with that last-minute winner. They also drew at Arsenal in the Premier League, so I, I think they'll be good enough to get a point in what looks to be a low scorer. And Adrian, while Dan's giving his uh, verdict on the game, can you dig out any specials you've got, like managers having a fight and stuff like that? Dan, what have you got? Uh, I think Chelsea might nick this, actually. Uh, I, I think the United's, you know, the build-up to the game, they've, they've had the away game in the week. They've also got one less day to prepare, so that's, that's a, quite a big disadvantage in preparation. I think Chelsea, these games against the big clubs, it suits the way they play. They often play with a, a pacey players on the counter-attack, the likes of Hazard, William Pedro, it does does seem to you know be a bit of a cat and mouse game, but I can I can see Chelsea hurting United on on the break uh, if they get a chance to break if United push forward enough. But uh, I just think I think it'll be a tight game. But I think if there is to be a winner, I would I would I would uh, you know I would, I would err on the side of Chelsea. And Chelsea are odds against drawing the, I bet. So in, uh, interesting one as well is that he's used Herrera very well against Hazard, and of course Herrera got injured last mm. night, so he won't be. Available, so they won't be yeah, able to so do that man marking. He, he might have a bit of, bit of freedom on him before. Good shout. Maybe Hazard could be the difference maker. Adrian, have we got anything on sp silly uh, manager specials and stuff? Anything going on? No, we haven't got a lot of silly uh, manager specials here, but we have decided to enhance the red card in the match. So we were offering at 11 to 4, and we've now pushed out to 7 to 2 for uh, a bit of a test. Here. Oh, 7 to 2. <laughs> that sounds good. Who's the arbiter? I don't know do the arbiter. I, I mean, we do know. I, I, I've not got it on me at I'll the look moment. It up. Um, okay, yeah, that sounds interesting. See, talking of ref did you see the um, Sam Wallace stuff? No Premier League refs going to the World Cup. Really? Yeah, apparently, according to him. That's saw astonishing, it, um, isn't it? Just saw that today, yeah, that he, he wrote about the... Um, yeah, yeah, the fact that, that none of them are going to be chosen. Would, so. would Clattenburg not qualify anymore? Oh, I don't think he's... No, I don't think he's allowed to, um, uh, to, to represent the Premier League and the others... Not, not who would written. you who would you have sent if, if we had to send well, one? Well, think? I mean Oliver yeah. Oliver would be the, the safest mind, one, yeah. but it's very strange. He's been given very few of the big games. You know, he's probably got Man United Chelsea now, but I mean he does he seems to be getting quite a lot of the Mickey Mouse Premier League games recently, which is I find quite strange. I don't know what he's done wrong, but he must have done must have done something because we're seeing too much of Taylor and Moss for, for, for yeah, my Yeah, Moss life. is getting a lot of games, <laughs> gets a doesn't lot. he? Gets a lot does, of games, he, he doesn't he? Does Who does would it. you send, Dan? No, Oliver was the, was, the name, was the name that sprung to mind. I've always, he's always impressed me. I mean, he, he, like any ref, he makes his mistakes and that. But uh, no, he's, he's always seemed to have a very cool head on him. Okay, I wonder who's going to send the VAR. Which country will be supplying the video, ref? That would be a big <laughs> thing. <laughs> Arbiter Atkinson is on duty at Old Trafford. Probably the most experienced of them, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, good ref, good ref. I, th I think that's a shame. I think it's a snub. I'd like Mike Dean to have done it. He deserves it. <laughs> I think he's brilliant. Right, 4.30 then, the Carabao Cup final. Arsenal versus Manchester City. Yet another trip for Wembley for those poor old Arsenal fans who always moan about how awful it is supporting their poor little club. <laughs> Honestly, how are they going to cope with yet another trip to Wembley? Dry your eyes, Arsenal fans, right? You could support Palace. How do we bet, Adrian? So currently Arsenal here 4-1, to the draw is 16-5, and Man City are 4-7. Blimey, I haven't looked at the bet, and four to one just sounds quite big, Dan. Yeah, I was. I, I thought the same. I was looking to kind of a way of getting with Arsenal, really. And the more I looked at the teams, you know, the more I thought, mm, hang on a minute, I, I just can't see them. Uh, 
them, them doing the business. I mean, uh, they've got Aubameyang and Ozil, you know, might, might you know, come up with something, but I, I look at them defensively against that, you know, the, what, what City have got going forward. I know the Wigan game was, a, you know, I mean, they didn't actually play that bad against Wigan, really, down to 10 men for the, you know, half the game and, you know, absolutely battered them. Psychologically, I don't think that's going to do too much uh, damage. They're just far and away the best team in the league. And, and even if you look at their form against the, the big six, they've had five wins and only one defeat against the big six. So they've got such good... You know, solid form against those sides. I just think they're a class apart, and uh, no, I think they'll. The, the way of, I mean, I wouldn't be backing them to win on the ninety minutes. I think the price is too short. So I was looking at uh, to get a bit of juice out of it. They do concede the odd goal. You know, Man City, Arsenal got you know that threat as I mentioned up front. So City to win and both teams to score. I thought was a, was about seven to four. That sounds all right, doesn't it, Adrian? What's your Wembley verdict? Yeah, I, I actually like the Arsenal price of four to one. I don't think they can win it. <laughs> I think they're having a chance of winning it, but four to one just looks a bit big for uh, what's considered one of the top teams in England in a, in, a, in a stadium they're pretty used to playing in. Really now, everything has its price, Adrian, doesn't it? So four to it one does, yeah. does it for Adrian? Does it do it for you, Lano? Not overly. Um, I mean, you you could make a case of saying our our Arsenal sort of closer to you know the mid-table Premier League team, of this yeah, world, than yeah. they are Man City. Um, the way I was looking at it was for the second half to be the highest scoring. Uh, City games against the big teams, particularly uh, five of the six, more goals in the second half. Um, just the way that they, they tend to pan out is that they have all the ball and can't always find the breakthrough. And then eventually their quality tells. Or um, in some of the sort of lesser games, they, they go to sleep and, and maybe concede one or two and then wake up and, and finish the game off. So that was the way I was looking at it. And also Arsenal, I can see them setting up very similar to when they went to Wembley a couple of weeks ago against Tottenham when they were good defensively for 45 minutes and then Koscielny goes to sleep, uh, you know, Ozil doesn't track the, the, the ball out wide and, and um, you know, Harry Kane scored and once they actually scored, they really crumbled for about 20 minutes and um, Tottenham didn't put them away. I think City probably um, will. It just frustrating really. I had a nice quadrumania back page to go with um, oh, sort of them lined up in the film cover of sort of Quadrophenia oh. and, you know, th th this to be the second, effectively the second leg. But, um, of course, will Grigg ruin that? Oh, bastard. Oh, well, never mind. OK, chaps, are you going what, what, to go and watch some football this weekend? Um, yeah, Peterborough versus AFC Wimbledon on um, Saturday. And then, I Have mean, you ever been to Peterborough? I've been, I've been a many moons ago, yeah. I went there for a, a midweek game once. Palace, God, it must have been 25 years ago. Chris Armstrong scored the winner. Oh, they, yeah. they have the, it's like Southampton, they have these tiny little two-tiered stands and very, very narrow stepping, so I hope okay. you're not on the terracing. Um, no, no, I won't be. What no. was your big takeout from Craven Cottage last week? Oh, Fulham were, Fulham were very good. but uh, we've got the big one, haven't we, Saturday? Fulham Wolves, Fulham Wolves, it? it is a huge game. The one thing I took out of it, um, not after timing, because it was in the piece that went on the website over the weekend, was that Villa without Grealish and Adoma were really poor, um, said to oppose them against Preston and I continue to oppose them as long as they've got Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday. If those two are not back, difficult to see where the goals are coming from. How was Jedi? Was he all right? Um, he did okay, blocked the spaces, but I mean, you know, Fulham eventually just passed around them. Um, looked like a, a sort of bottom half Premier League team, really. Excellent stuff. Dan, what's the weekend hold for you? No, off, Vicarage off, Road Yeah, Saturday. yeah, Watford, Watford and Everton again, really. Yeah, yeah, and watch my watch my uh, my son in the morning as well, do his football training. So, Good yeah, stuff on yeah. Sunday. Grafting? Uh, Sunday, no, I'm off again, so I'll just be watching, uh, enjoying the free games on, on the telly, yeah. Lovely. What about you, Adrian? Have you got a nice, exciting weekend lined up? Uh, no, it's just going to be more the same, uh, working here and watch some of the football while it's on. Oh, well, that can't be bad, can it? OK, lads, hope you're back. Plenty of winners. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching or listening. Don't forget we're back next Thursday with another football postcast. And if you enjoy listening to these broadcasts, please do rate, review and subscribe on iTunes. Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym.